right, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about conversions. So let's look at this problem. You have 536 quarters. Man, I wish I had that many quarters. <laughs> how many dollars would you have? All right, well, how would I figure this out? I have given you these conversion factors up here. So we know that there's four quarters and a dollar, or you get one dollar for every four quarters. So let's start out with what we have. We know we have 536 quarters. Okay, and then we know there are four quarters uh, in every one dollar. Now, wait a second. Why did I write it like that? Couldn't you have just taken 536 divided by four? Well, yes, that would get you the same answer. And we're gonna be performing the same steps, but the reason we're writing it out like this is because you'll see over the next couple lessons when we do conversions, it's better to write our conversion factor as a fraction like this, especially when we're doing multiple conversions in a row because it allows us to cancel our units and it will get us the right answer every single time than trying to just do it in your head or skip a couple steps. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Now, if you remember in math, if you cross multiply, you're able to cancel some things out that are the same. So our units are going to cancel out, our quarters are going to cancel out. 536 divided by 4 gets us 134. And the only units that are remaining here are dollars. So I will write out $134. Now, I know that seems way more complicated than it needs to be, but just bear with me. This process, like I said, will make sense over the next couple lessons. You'll see how everything kind of comes together. Um, but like I said, the reason we write out our conversion factors as fractions is because when we're doing multiple conversions, it will help us keep everything straight. So let's do another example using our dollars and quarters. So you have $5. So we have $5. How many quarters are in $5? Well, I know that for every $1 I have, I have four quarters. All right, so as before, I wrote up my conversion factor as a fraction. And just like before, our units in the numerator and the denominator are gonna cancel out like that. So the only unit that remains is quarters. So both numbers that we're multiplying are in the numerator. So this will be five times four will give us 20. And the only units that remain are quarters. All right, so a conversion factor is a ratio or a fraction that expresses the same quantity in two different units. Now, we ignore conversion factors when we determine sig figs. That was actually one of the first points or first rules from sig figs. So here are the steps, and we're gonna just write these down for right now, and then when we do some examples, you'll see how these work. Step number one, when converting between grams and moles, the conversion factor is the molar mass. We always start with the given. So in the first two examples where we used our dollars and quarters, notice I started with whatever we had. So in the first example, we had 536 quarters. That was the number that I started with first. In the second example, we had $5. So I started my converting with that $5. We always place the same units diagonal from the given. So we had quarters times dollars over quarters. Those quarters were diagonal from each other. And finally, calculate, round to the appropriate number of sig figs and include units, okay? We always wanna make sure we do that. So here's an example. You'll see how this all kind of comes together. How many moles are in 32 grams of water, H2O? So our first rule is we're going to start with what's given. So we have 32 grams. Now, 
we have 32 grams and I need to know the molar mass of water. So let's figure that out first. So for hydrogen, there are two molecules, sorry, there are two atoms of hydrogen. 1.01 .01 is the molar mass of one grams per mole. And then for oxygen, the molar mass is 16 grams per mole. All right, so two times 1.01 .01 plus 16 gets us a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of water. Okay, so the grams are gonna go on the bottom. So there are 18.02 grams for every one mole of water. So when we enter this in our calculator, it's going to be 32 times one divided by 18.02 or 32 grams divided by 18.02. That'll get you the same thing. If you're going to enter this in your calculator, you wanna make sure that you use parentheses and you should get an answer of 1.775804. Okay, that's a giant number. How do we round this? So let's go to the number that we were given originally. There are 32 grams. That's two significant figures. So we're gonna wanna round our final answer to two significant figures. Going from left to right, let's underline the first two significant digits. Okay, and then let's look at the third. So are we gonna leave this as 1.7 or are we gonna round up to 1.8? So the third digit, seven, is between five and nine. So we're gonna go ahead and round this up. So this would be 1.8. And the question was asking us for moles. So we're gonna include those units, 1.8 moles. All right, in this example, it says how many moles are in 4.75 grams of NaOH? So let's first write down what we're given. 4.75 grams. All right, we need the molar mass of NaOH, sodium hydroxide. So sodium, Na, has a molar mass of 22.99 grams per mole. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16.00 grams per mole. And finally, hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01 .01 grams per mole. So we're gonna go ahead and add those three numbers up. You get a nice round 40.00 grams per mole. Okay, so remember our units need to be diagonal from each other. So the grams need to go on the bottom. So we have 40 grams for every one mole of sodium hydroxide. So if we go ahead and multiply this out, we get 0 0.11875. And in our original answer, three or our original number, 4.75, we have three significant figures. So going from left to right, we're gonna underline the first three significant digits. Um, remember that leading zero doesn't count, so we'll start here at the one. So we underline the first three significant digits and look at the fourth. So are we gonna leave this as 0.118 or 0.119? Well, we would round this up to 0.119 and our units are moles. We're looking for moles. Also, if you were to cancel out your units, the moles would be the only ones left here. So 0.119 moles. In our next example, it says how many grams, how many grams of sodium chloride are in 6.80 moles? So this is a little bit different than the previous two examples because this time it's asking for grams. So we're kind of going the other way. Again, let's start with what we're given, 6.80 moles. We still need the molar mass of NaCl. 
sodium Na is 22.99. And chlorine Cl is 35.45. If we add those two numbers together, you get 58.44 grams per mole. So when we set this up, instead of the grams being on the bottom this time, our moles are gonna be on the bottom. So there's 58.44 grams for every mole. So for every one mole, we have 58.44 grams, okay? So careful here, we wanna make sure that our units are diagonal from each other so they'll cancel out. All right, when we do our multiplication here, 6.80 times 58.44, we get 397.392. And we have, let's see here, three significant figures in our original number. That trailing zero counts because it's after a decimal. So we need three numbers in our final answer. So going from left to right, we underline the first three significant digits and then look at the fourth. So are we gonna leave this as 397 or round up to 398? So three is less than five, so we'll leave this as 397. And the units, we're gonna be grams. All right, and our final example, it says how many grams of calcium are in 3.2 moles. This one isn't as complicated as the previous examples because we're only dealing with one element here. So if we look up calcium on the periodic table, calcium's molar mass is 40.08 grams per mole. Okay, so we have 3.2 moles and for every one mole of calcium, we have 40.08 grams. Our units are gonna cancel because they're diagonal from each other. 3.2 times 40.08 gives us a final answer of 128.256. We have two significant figures in our original number. So we need two significant digits in our final answer. So we underline the first two significant digits and then look at the third. So is this going to be, well, is this gonna be 120 or 130? We're gonna round up to 130. And because we only want two significant digits, we are going to leave the decimal off. If we included the decimal like this, that would be three sig figs. So we want 130 without a decimal, that's two significant figures. So our final answer would be 130 grams. And that is converting between moles and grams.